What is up my bodyweight warriors? Today I have a special episode for you. I'm interviewing my man Ryan Hurst from Gold Medal Bodies. Big inspiration for what I do on this channel. If you enjoyed this sort of video, hit that thumbs up button, support the channel, show that you like this sort of content. Leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on the episode, the information that Ryan shared. And while you're down there, if you have any other people you'd like me to speak to or any people you'd like to hear from, then leave their name down below and I'll do my best to make it happen. Enough rambling, let's jump in to the interview. Enjoy. Welcome Warriors, I am joined by the co-founder of Gold Medal Bodies, Ryan Hurst, today for an interview to chat about all things movement and mobility. It's going to be an awesome chat, so I hope you guys enjoy. For those who don't maybe know you, the, the two or three people out there who don't, would you like to introduce yourself and tell, your list, tell, tell the audience a little bit about your story, where you've come from, how you got to this point today? Absolutely. First off, thanks for uh, having me on here. It's always a pleasure. So, uh, yeah, a little bit of background about me. Um, I'm originally from the United States. Uh, started off, I was about five, six years old. Uh, started off in gymnastics and uh, competed in gymnastics until I was 18 years old. And um, during high school, while I was also competing in gymnastics, uh, I got very interested in martial art, and so I started practicing martial art on top of my gymnastics. I um, had an injury when I was 18 years old, stopped doing gymnastics. I continued with martial art, uh, ended up moving to here in Japan, went to uh, uni in Japan, uh, up north uh, in uni, uh, practice martial art. That was really why I came to Japan. I was only supposed to stay in Japan for not even a year. Uh, I ended up staying for a very long time. I've been in Japan now for 25 years, and uh, I'm 44 right now. But uh, in Japan, I ended up working at a martial art complex. I worked there for eight years. I had the pl privilege of training with a lot of very good mm -hmm. instructors in multiple martial arts simply because I was interpreting for a lot of them. So um, they would use me as their demo, as their okay. person to beat up, and uh, I would interpret for people there. <laughs> but my main focus was on judo and kendo at that time. Yeah, and I, can see and the I stuck with. Oh, yeah, actually, yeah, Just right the, back there. The casual so black belt. I, yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's for my judo. Uh, but actually, right now I just practice uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I've got the BJJ bug. Uh, that's that's my favorite thing to do right now. And uh, I stopped doing judo uh, when I was 33 years old because during I had an accident uh, where I was thrown, and a guy when he landed on top of me, it blew out my shoulder. And so I had reconstructive surgery and promised my wife that I would stop competing. And, uh, that was, that was good because, uh, forced me to focus on, um, my coaching side of things. Yeah. For sure. And during that time, you know, I was, I was into the fitness world, uh, doing a lot of, uh, work in another organization ended up, um, becoming the program uh, director in that organization, and that's where I met uh, my business partners, Jarlo and Andy, and uh, we founded GMB. And so that's that's what it started. So it started off in where basically looking at some gymnastic type movements, but mm -hmm. we've moved well beyond that in the uh, I say short time. It, I guess it's been it's about eight years now since oh, really? we started GMB. Yeah. But um, you guys were early to the game. Yeah, yeah, we really were, and 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 it was nice. There was there was only one other, really one other. I, how is the way to say this? I don't want to say too much about it, but uh, one other company out there doing uh, gymnastic oriented stuff, and uh, we started off. Uh, Jarlo sent me a set of gymnastic rings. He said, "Hey man, you should be you should be training these again. You know, you should be doing some stuff." And so I started, you know, at, at the age of, I guess I was about, I don't know, maybe almost thirty five years old. So I'm thinking like ten, maybe maybe ten years ago, maybe ten years ago, like thirty four. So it was after my shoulder incident, and I wanted to get back into uh, 
my own training. Jarl was like, hey, man, do some, <laughs> send you some rings. And so he sent me some gymnastic rings. And it was the first time I had been back on gymnastic rings since I was 18 years old. Mm-hmm. And looked at it from a completely different perspective because, yeah, I was 34 years old. And yeah. so it wasn't like I could just jump back up there and do stuff. And so uh, I started looking at it in a way where how could these help me for the things that I wanted to be doing, especially my martial art and the other things out there. So that's how GMB kind of really started. And we, our first program that we put out was called Rings One, very original name. And uh, <laughs> it was our Rings program. And since then, you know, we've updated it numerous times. But uh, obviously, things have changed a lot since then. I think that makes a lot of sense. Like a lot of the people who are kind of into this scene on YouTube are maybe those who didn't get a chance to do it when they were younger or they just weren't in that space. And then coming at it from an from a, an older age is actually so much more yeah. dancing and a completely different approach. So you having that experience probably is why your rings programs are so successful. And like, I mean, I came across you on YouTube um, and I'm sure a lot of people who know of you will watch some of your awesome tutorials your very simple way of explaining things and your kind of open source of information, just throwing stuff out there, giving people information, which is very much, you know, what inspired me uh, among with others to do the same. I think, you know, more information out there, the more power to the people to do what they can do with their body, uh, which is... Absolutely, of, well, thank you, yeah, yeah. Kind of why I wanted to chat to you today was that I know gold medal bodies kind of a gymnastics focused and... Uh-huh. You having that experience as your childhood kind of explains that, but um, it seems that you're moving more into this like movement space, as you said, you kind of developed into. Um, is that like a build up of your previous experience with martial arts or jiu jitsu, or is that kind of like something you just developed alongside? Like, how did you get into that from gymnastics, or yeah. you just kind of melded the two together? Yeah, a great question. Um, so. First and foremost, I want to let people know that uh, even though I was in gymnastics, I was competitor uh, for a very long time in gymnastics, very competitive, very competitive in martial art. Judo was my thing. I'm not an athlete at all anymore. I'm not a gymnast or anything. I mean, again, I'm 44 years old. I'm a father. I have two kids. You know, have a big. We have we run this business, and and really, when we first started off with GMB. Uh, it was kind of a side project. I got to be honest. It, it was one of those things where it was Jarlo and I when we first started it. And he was like, hey, man, you should be teaching this stuff. And we just tried it out. And we found out that people were really interested in it. Um, Andy, when he came on board, we, you know, we knew Andy for, you know, we'd known Andy. Uh, Andy was actually a student of mine. Uh, here in Osaka when he lived here and uh, we brought him in and he's the CEO of our company so basically he's the one who's helped to be able to look at growing uh, what we're doing and uh, basically the three of us it's been great because the three of us uh, what I'm getting at is you know not looking at it from an athlete perspective looking at it from three guys Mm -hmm. who have things going on in their life and so where it started off with me teaching these particular skills that people wanted to get we realized that it's the skills yes these sparkly things that people want there's so many different tutorials and things out there us with our background with me having taught for so long being involved in gymnastics, martial art, Jarlo's background as a physical therapist, as well as Andy's background as an educator, we look at ourselves uh, not as a fitness company, but as an education company. And so what we found is that what over the years, over these eight years, are, even though we didn't know it at that time, what we were really doing and moving towards was being able to show people how to get there in a way that's productive for them by focusing on their goals and doing this with focusing on their physical autonomy. And so even though right now you see our focus, it might seem that's more about movement. It's actually always been about that movement. Mm -hmm. Again, it wasn't that we wanted to be gymnasts or we wanted to be these athletes or things like that. It was simply we wanted to be able to do these we want to be able to do the fun stuff to be able to continue to do the stuff in our life that we wanted to do. Yeah. And so that's why we've really, you know, over the years focused on creating a solid system with our assessments 
and our method where people can use that, not just in GMB, but take that method that we have and apply it to the other things that they're wanting to do. We don't want to exercise just for the sake of exercise. We want to make sure that we're helping people to be able to do the things that they want to do in their life, whether that be just play with their kids. You know, maybe they want to get an iron cross. That's great. You know, we can help you on that track. But but really the goal in itself is not the exercise, but uh, really what you want to do in your lifestyle and your hobbies. So yeah. that's that's really what we're after now. Mm, yeah. I think that's true. Like everyone's got everything else going on. Like they are an athlete, but probably second or third to whatever else they're doing in life. Absolutely. And, you know, another thing, too, is uh, we don't really target uh, the young people. That might sound kind of weird. But, I mean, <laughs> there's a big difference between being in your 20s and your 30s and your 40s and beyond and really looking at what do you need. And that, that's really what we're after is, is yeah, you know, it's great if you want to be able to do all these cool tricks and stuff. But what do you really need? Mm-hmm. And so we want to give you what you want, but more importantly, what you need and help you to be able to continue to do this for as long as you want. Cause that's what I want. Yeah. I, I like to say that I want to be able to play with my kids, kids. That's what I want. So, yeah. That, and like, to be able to do as long as possible. So. <laughs> I think that's so true. Um, I think when you see like, especially gymnasts doing all these incredible skills, like, as you said, iron cross, Maltese plant, like, you know, how many years of practice go into that, but also oh, the toll it takes on yeah. your body, like the, the yep. tendons, the ligaments, like, little nagging injuries if you speak to any gymnast or any kind of person at that high level doing a top level of performance they've always got something like going a little bit wrong or some sort of nagging pain and i guess you can get a long way with a good practice and kind of still do some cool stuff but balance out with more general more absolutely and and being realistic i think i'm not telling people that you shouldn't Mm -hmm. you know focus on these big goals but let's be realistic okay and let's have a solid plan and and build those foundation build a solid foundation that you can work up from that instead of just watching a tutorial on youtube and thinking you can jump up and try and do a plan or something (laughs) guilty (laughs) yeah um so you know talk about movement and kind of one of the big concepts in sort of movement training i guess is the the playful aspect of it and yeah, something yeah. with I think a lot of people are missing when it comes to exercise. Exercise is kind of considered a chore rather than maybe mm-hmm. like an expression or something that could be playful. Um, how does play sit in your practice? Like, do you have mm-hmm. some structured training and a bit of play, or is it just like kind of whatever you feel like doing? Like, I'd love to hear how you kind of put that together. Sure, sure. Great question. Uh, and this is this is something that we focus on in our programming, and so. Uh, in our foundation program, our, our, our first program that we suggest for everybody to start with is called Elements. And in Elements, the programming that we have in there, we cover the four P's and the R. And I'm just going to kind of cover this quickly and it will answer your question. And this is how I do it. And really, this is this is a new way. We've changed up the wording. The 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 language that we use to try and reflect something that's going to allow a person to, again, use this, this method that we have in anything that you're doing out there. So, so basically the first P that we have is prep. So prep is just simply looking at what do you need to do in order to prepare yourself for what you're going to be focusing on that day, your skill. And we're always focused on a skill. So let's say, um, let's give an example of, Oh, I have no idea. Let's say everybody likes to do the handstand. So let's just yep. do the handstand, okay? And, and it could be a planche. It could be whatever you want to do. It could be a cartwheel. doesn't matter, okay? But let's say that you, you want to work on the handstand. So you need to prepare yourself for that day. And so that could mean that you need to focus, well, should mean that you're focusing on looking at joint prep, you're also going to be focusing on some stretches that you're going to need to make sure that you're getting ready, your mobility, things like that that's going to make sure that you can transition into the next part, which is the next P, which is practice. Now, practice is where you're focusing on that skill. It is. It has uh, the intent, and the intent that you have for this is to focus not just on cranking out 
repetitions after repetition after repetition is focus on quality movement Mm -hmm. because i like to say i don't care how many repetitions you can do i only want to see you do one do it as beautifully as you can yeah and then try and do another and so what we do is we focus on blocks of time and so our practice you know each person is different me I'm a little bit different than most people. This is my job, so I have a little bit of extra time. Not extra time, but I make time to be able to focus more on the things I need to do. But there are some people who only have like 45 minutes a day to work out. So let's say your prep could be a 10-minute prep. A lot of people like to look at it as warm-up. I don't like to look at it that way. I think of it as a prep for that day. Then looking at your practice, maybe you only have 15 minutes. So during that time, what you're going to do is you're going to look at practicing that handstand at whatever level you're at. Mm -hmm. And performing as many quality attempts for whatever level you're, level you're at during that time. Now, the next thing that we have after practice is play. And this is getting to your question. That is, in order to be able to play, in order to explore the movement, explore mm-hmm. the handstand, you first need to have a solid base to figure out where you're at and to at least have the basics down for that. So let's say like with your handstand, you're at a point where um, you can you can actually hold maybe like a five-second handstand yeah. or something like that. Okay. So then what you can do is you can look at play then as what I mentioned as exploration and explore the movement. And so instead of thinking of just trying to hold that handstand for as long as possible, then you can say, all right, well, you know what? When I'm in my handstand, what if I were to straddle? What's it going to be like if I straddle? What if instead of pointing my toes, I don't and I move my legs around? Hey, that's great. That's going to give me a better sense of where my legs are in the air. It's also going to force me to work my balance. But because I'm focused on the con- focusing on the concept of play, it takes away the notion of thinking that things have to be perfect, and it also gives mm-hmm. me more feedback. And by using this exploration and that play, I can learn more about what's going on, and I can apply that to my next practice. And so what it does is it all comes back to awareness. And this is a very big thing that we're after in GMB is awareness. You yeah. always want to have a better awareness of what's going on. So that was an example of a handstand. It could be anything from um, – uh, locomotive type movements uh, you know animal movements very popular people like to say that uh locomotive type movements it could be simply and i'm gonna this is gonna sound maybe kind of weird but looking at the squat in terms of like a barbell squat play could actually be where you take that bar and you unload the bar so you're just working with the bar and you play with a different variation of a squat. So maybe you're used to doing, um, and maybe this is not. This is probably not relevant to a lot of people that are listening. But just try and take your mind, the yeah. frame of reference out. Is like maybe you're used to just doing back squats. Maybe unload the bar and try some front squats, zercher squats, different things where you've never really done before but using that as a time to explore to see what's going on in the body so that's an example of play that we can use Mm -hmm. we after that and then what we want to do is we want to pressurize what we're doing and so this this is where oh i do need to say during play this is very important too during play you're not going to be playing at your highest level of your skill Mm mm-hmm so you will regress the movement. You'll take it down and be playing with that at a regress level where you're very, very comfortable with the movement. That way you're not going to end up injuring yourself. And that's important. And this goes the same for when we look at pressurization. When we pressurize, this is where we intensify that particular block of time in order to further condition ourselves to make this go better. Yeah. So a lot of people like to, you know, think of this as their conditioning section. Um, coming at it from a martial art perspective, this could be possibly your rolling. If you do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you would say roll, uh, spar. Um, this is where you take that that movement that you that skill that you're working on and mm-hmm. put it into action. And so it could also be where, for example, um, if we're looking at a handstand and we want to pressure, pressurize our handstand work, then what we do is we'd go to the wall and we would focus. Uh, one example would be to focus on holding that handstand for a minute 
with as perfect form as possible in order to focus on improving our strength and our stamina as well as our mental fortitude in order to be able to help us to stay up there longer for the next time. So many different ways that we can use pressurization in there. I tend to stray away from repetitions. Again, I look at blocks of time, yeah. um, performing movements for a period of time, 30 seconds, one minute, depending on what's going on. But again, it's regressed and we do it at a level so that we can focus on quality of movement. Last thing is reflection. Uh, just taking some time after your workout to sit down and look at what went well with it, what are some things that uh, you do need to work on for next session, and also just setting yourself up for success for the next one. So coming back again to your question of play, yes, play play plays a huge <laughs> part of what we're after here in GMB, but it's not just simply uh, just trying and exploring something without having a base first. Yeah. So we do have this structure and um, want to make sure that people are set up in a way for success focusing on that particular skill that they're after and working towards their goals at a level that's good for them. Yeah, that makes sense. I think that kind of reflects my own experience. Like if you just play and you don't have that foundation of something to back it up, that kind of you just here, there and everywhere. And if you're just focusing yeah. on staying in this, like I think Emma Lewis said, like this two meter by two meter, like golden cage of movement. Uh, and you're like literally yes. just working in this yes. box. Then you never get to like yes. properly explore how, good something could be or how that's far. right 100%. that's right um i think the, yeah. the being non-judgmental is a point that you made and i think that's so crucial i think when somebody says to go play i don't know whether it's because we've been conditioned to, to be uh as no judgmental of ourselves but like straight away you start doing something you're like oh this isn't very good i can't do this this doesn't look good this right. looks terrible yeah. like how would yeah. you get people in the mindset of trying not to be judgmental about what they're doing and kind of just yeah. it's there. very very good very good question this is something i use a lot and i say this a lot is embrace the suck <laughs> and you might have heard some other people out there say this and the way what they're saying is like hard go hardcore and kind of thing i'm not saying that what i'm saying is this we yeah. all have to understand that before we can be good with something we're going to suck yeah, yeah. that's that's good and the reason why is you'll never get good by bypassing that suckiness. Through that suckiness, you will <laughs> learn as long as you're open to it. Yeah. And so learning from, I don't even want to say mistakes, but by, by practicing something and saying, you know what, I'm not really good at this. Okay, that's totally cool. You're not going to be. It's, it's, it's cool. You're a beginner, okay? But what is that one thing that you can learn from that movement right now? that you can focus on that's going to help you for the next time you do it. Yeah. And instead of trying to look at 10 different cues or key points to work on at one time, just focus on one thing. And if you can focus on making that one thing better, then you're closer to being at least good with that movement. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, being judgmental, that's what we do. And, and what we what we also do is is we compare ourselves to other people. Yeah. It's just the nature of being human. And if we can, for one thing, get past the ego, which is very tough, and kind of put that to the side and just say, hey, listen, I'm a beginner. I'm just going to do the best I can today. But what I'm going to try and do is just take one thing and try and make it a little bit better than I did before. And it's like flexibility. A lot of people say, well, I want the front splits. Well, first thing is, do you really need the front splits? It's a different topic. Yeah. But, but if you really want to work on flexibility, then all you need to do is improve just a teeny, teeny, tiny bit. And each time you do that, you know, over the course of a year, that's a lot. Yeah. You're going to go a long way. And so focus on that one thing that you need to do. Embrace the sock. And then just do the work. Mm -hmm. so that along with trusting in the process will get you really anywhere you want to do and it just it doesn't even you know it's not just about exercise it's about life as well so there's okay. your zen for the day <laughs> <laughs> well, i mean the things you brought up flexibility mobility i feel like that is kind uh -huh. of the ultimate embrace the suck because oh yeah oh yeah like there's no easy way around it like people can jump into strength training and be kind of naturally strong but most people Absolutely. suck with mobility Absolutely. Um, oh yeah when it comes to mobility training like do you 
do you see it as kind of a foundation of a practice? Do you see it as like as part of that preparation? Is it like a basic element? Um, and if so, like how do you convince people to go about and actually thinking of it in that way? Because often people are like, oh, Dilla, we're stretching at the end, you know, stretch yeah. my hamstring, stretch this. Yeah. Like how do you sure. convince people that it's that foundation? Mm-hmm. I think uh, the first the first thing that that we need to do is we need to look at exactly what you need. Um, you know, like I said, I gave the example of, of a person saying, um, I want the front splits. Okay. Okay, great. That's good. But, but, but why, <laughs> what, why do you really want? And this is something that a lot of people don't want to hear. Mm-hmm. Well, because it looks cool because Jean-Claude Van Damme can do it. Now, he does side splits, you know, but, but, you know, whatever, but it looks cool. Okay, great. How is that really going to help you? Yeah. If, if it is going to help you for something good, I'm going to help you to get it. But do you need it? And are you at a point right now where the rest of your body is going to help you to get it? And so, um, again, realistically looking at things. So it comes down to, though, like being able to use that for the other things in your life that you need. So the majority of people, to be perfectly honest, don't need front splits. No. Even the people, you know, if, if even if we're looking at um, – that's a good example. Um, people who are doing body weight exercise right now, who are very into it. I mean, unless it's something that, again, you need, let's say, like for gymnastics or or maybe you're into a kicking martial art or, or something like that, over splits, things like that, that I just don't think they're necessary. No. I really don't. But we do need a certain level of flexibility in yeah. order to make sure – that we're able to move in the ways that we want. So mobility, flexibility, I, there's a little bit yeah, of difference in there, but let's just, yeah, let's just look at it that way. And, and so, you know, coming back, that's, that's why we have our program called Focus Flexibility. And that is, is looking at exactly what you need, focusing on what you need. And so that's why we have these eight um, uh, BAPs is what we call them, uh, okay. where we're assessing what you need. And so, this is what it comes down to, and that is looking at your goal. Mm-hmm. And so um, when you're performing things, some people some people might be just fine by using locomotor movements because their mobility isn't even at a point right now where, you know, Focusing on the splits is going to help them. Yeah, it's going to help a little bit, but what they need to be doing is focusing more and looking at that foundation. And this is coming back to what you're talking about is there are these certain things that we're looking at that you first need to focus on. You know, mm-hmm. can you squat? Yeah, 100%. That, that's, a, that's, a, that's, that's a big one. And, and, and I want to go even, even further and say not just squat, but can you get up, you know, can you get down on the floor? Can you get down to the floor and get up off of the floor comfortably? It's amazing how many people can't even do that anymore. Uh, really? uh, some people can can squat, but they they don't. They're not able to sit comfortably on the ground and get and stand up comfortably off of the ground. Uh, and this is even here in Asia. You know, here in Japan, it's funny that a lot yeah. of people have trouble. Why is that's because the the Western style toilets now instead of the squatty potties. But coming back to what we're talking about, yes, there's this foundation that we're looking at, and that's what the focus flexibility is first looking at. Go through these eight assessments that we have. Let's see where you need work. Mm-hmm. Some people don't even really know where they need work. Some people you know, think, yeah, I want to be able to squat down, and then they test their shoulder mobility and find out, wow, you know what, I can't even really touch my back. Well, you know, putting on a seatbelt, they might even have trouble doing that and not even realize it. Mm-hmm. You know, twerk their back or something just yeah. because they're instead having to compensate somewhere else in the body. So, yeah, again, it comes down to your goals, also uh, an understanding and awareness of, of what you need. Mm-hmm. And so by, by going through certain assessments, uh, especially the ones that we have, it can help you. So you kind of mentioned eight, I don't know, eight assessments um, and like that foundational level. What would you kind of say is a 
base level of mobility that you would sort of maybe maybe summarize it in movement patterns or something so i know the squat is yes. definitely up there really big one and that kind of is absolutely very global with absolutely. like hamstrings ankles knee hip everything sure. in one but like is there any others <laughs> that you would add to that list do you think is you know really a foundational movement that you need Absolutely. So uh, I already mentioned our program elements. So I'll go ahead and reference that. And this is really your question. Exactly. You know, this is what we're after is looking at three of uh, three basic movements. And our first movement is the bear. Second movement is the monkey. Third movement is the frogger. Um, the bear starts off with our a frame position. So this is not yoga. But some people might recognize the downward facing dogs. Basically what this is is where you have your butt in the air and your hands are flat on the ground and your legs are straight. And what we're doing is we're assessing shoulder mobility. We're also looking at the uh, the lumbar as well as the hamstrings and assessing what's going on with that. There is no right or wrong. It's simply where you are right now yeah. Yeah. and looking. And then we work from that see where you are put that into motion so that would be the first one the second one is the monkey and the monkey is focusing on the squat that's our assessment for the monkey and the monkey basically is going from a squat position you place your hands on the ground and you traverse laterally uh, what this is looking at is, is uh, you've already mentioned is the hips the ankles is you know a bit of the lumbar of course is involved in there but basically looking at at the hip and the ankle mobility within that as well as uh by placing your hands on the ground and loading that structure there is a slight twist to it so we're also having this twisting component which a lot of people uh don't tend to look at unfortunately yeah. the final thing that we have is the frogger and the frogger is where we're going from squat position hands are on the ground we load the front uh, we load the arms the straight arms uh our arms are straight and we load the arms sorry and um pull our hips forward so what we do is our assessment for that is what i call the floating tabletop so this is where we start off having our hands shoulder with a shoulder width apart our knees are on the ground our feet are on the ground then we bring our knees off the ground just slightly and so it's a ta like a tabletop there mm -hmm. our knees are floating off the ground that's what i call it floating tabletop but what this is doing is it's looking at uh, we activate the core by pulling the hips slightly under. Mm -hmm. And so this, again, is not only just looking at that flexibility component, it's also looking at the strength. And so this is where we're looking at the wrists. We're looking at how the lumbar works in relation to the shoulders and the wrists. Then once we put it into motion, then we're looking at that mobility throughout the entire movement. So those three things are the basic, the fundamental patterns that we're looking at okay. uh, that's why we have them in elements yeah i like that it's simple simple um i guess uh, a final question something that gets thrown around quite a lot is passive active flexibility sure. where do you stand on that uh there's often a lot of debate on this but you know you know what it's um there is a lot of debate with that and and really our main thing about flexibility is, is simply this so if you can't attain a position that you'd like then you need to find a way to get into that range of motion okay yeah. so we're not trying to debate what is the best but the protocol that we use is kind of a variation of p and f right mm -hmm. so um what we're doing is is we're looking at a dynamic movement and a static hold together in order to help us to get into position. This is the focus flexibility program that we have. So, so we'll perform what we call pulses. And so what we'll do is 10 times we'll go to that in range, then back off, yeah. in range, back off. We'll do this 10 times, and then we'll find that in range and we'll hold for a certain amount of time. Could be in the very beginning, just 10 seconds, okay? And then what we'll do is we'll repeat those 10 pulses, and then after that, we'll extend the period of time that we perform that hold. So what we're doing in this way is looking at as that dynamic and that passive um, uh, components together. So that's why variation that we're talking about. Now, this is just an example, though, of for focused flexibility, look at specific stretches as well, though, this can be um, a, a different way of doing this is putting it all into motion. And so... Yeah. 
Jarlo, Jarlo is the one who created focus flexibility. He used, the reason why is he uses that in his physical therapy practice. And so found that it's not just a matter of stretching per se and holding that, but being active. So at yeah. first, at least having that specific range of motion that is safe to be able to put that into motion. And our goal is to put it into motion. Yeah. And so Jarlo has this great video that he did where it shows him just doing all these funky things and and what he's doing is stretching and it looks like he's just moving around on the ground doing this stuff but but it's a form of stretching but what it does is it comes back down to kind of a theme that you've brought up here is making sure that you have this foundation first looking at not only what you want but also what you need and so way that we do that again is is looking at um this variation of uh PNF and doing that through our pulses and our static holds. So I guess it's kind of comes back to use it or lose it and then with the front splits it's like that's you want the front exactly. splits. Why do you want the front splits? How are you gonna use yeah. the range of motion in a in an Absolutely. active way? How is it gonna help you move better? Um, but I guess yeah. if you just want to do the front splits, maybe that's good enough reason to work towards it's great. <laughs> it's absolutely wonderful, but I want to make sure that we help you to do it in a way yeah. That's going to be productive, not just for the front split, mm-hmm. but for the other stuff that you want. And so, you know, just focusing on front splits is great. But what are the other things that revolve around that are also going to help you yeah. in order to move beyond that once you get it? Because once you have it, what's next? Yeah, yeah, 100%. 100%. Um, <laughs> so to finish on up, I want to ask you a question. If you have I'm all into giving people actionable advice, something they can take away, do straight away. Uh, if you had one thing that you could recommend to the people watching or listening to go and do today and try and experiment with and see what works, see what happens, what would that thing be? It could be movement, it could be mobility, it could be like life in general. Like what's one thing you would tell them to go and try and do? Yeah, um, the, the main goal uh, for me is to bring more awareness uh, not only into just your body and your exercise, but everything that you're doing. And so the one thing that you can do right now is I'm assuming that the majority of people listening here exercise. I hope so, so. I hope start, so. I hope, I hope so, yeah. <laughs> start off your exercise by doing this. Sit down. Doesn't matter how you sit. Just sit down. Focus on your breath. Just try and become more aware of your breath. Don't try and change your breath at all. Sit and focus on your breath. Once you've done that, take that focus to the rest of your body to see what's going on in your body. So I think a lot of us have lost that awareness. Mm -hmm. Even though we might exercise, we might, you know, we walk down the street, we get in your car, ride your skateboard, whatever you're doing, great. I think things have become so automatic for us that I think we've lost a lot of this awareness. So if we can bring more awareness into what we're doing, it's not only going to help us to enjoy what we're doing better, it's also going to help us to get better. And so I think it starts with the breath. And so going into your exercise or whatever you're doing, first focus Take a little bit of time. It could be 10 seconds. It could be up to a minute. Just focus on that breath. And I'm not saying just to calm yourself or anything like that, but really bring the awareness to your breath and the rest of your body. If you can do that, then go into your exercise. I'm pretty sure that you're going to have a better workout simply because you're going to be more aware of what's now going on when you're performing the rest of the movements. So try and carry that into the rest of your life as well. When you're talking to someone doing an interview, you yeah. know, be involved with what that person is doing instead of thinking about what phone. else is going on in your life. Yeah, exactly. You know, if you if you ride a bus, instead of you know being on your phone, you're like check out what's going on around you. You know, you can learn a lot by doing that. And so, basically, trying to just be more aware of what's going on, I think, is going to help um, all of us to awesome. enjoy the process. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think that's a great little bit of advice. Um, so, for those who don't know, where can people find out more about you, more about gold medal bodies, and all the good stuff that you guys are doing? 
Yeah, so GMB Fitness, any of the socials, whether it be Google, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, everything, just type in GMB Fitness. Um, our homepage, our website, excuse me, I'm so old, I still call it, <laughs> uh, is gmb.io, gmb.io. Um, but again, easiest way, just type in GMB Fitness, YouTube, doesn't matter. Um, check it out. We've got tons and tons and tons and tons of videos <laughs> everywhere. Uh, send us an email, too. You will always get a reply from a real human. That is something that we pride ourselves on is a uh, speedy response, and we will always answer your email. Awesome. Thank you very much for joining me today. It was great fun. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Leave a comment down below. What did I say last time? <laughs> <laughs> <Ambient>. <laughs>